We, in a sense of people from Western technologically advanced culture, are so used to some concepts that we don't give any second thought about them. One of those concepts is that there are infinitely many numbers. We can provide whatever number and always find another number by adding 1, subtracting 17 or just whatever else you wanna do. But, as you read in the title, there are people who use very limited set of numbers, with 5 being the biggest one. Such a concept definitely follows some peculiar rules. In Amazonian rainforests and Kota Ralanjau indigenous land, there is a tribe called Munduruku, although they call themselves Huijuwu. The tribe has a rich history of contacts with Brazilians, that's why today they wear t-shirts, for example. But among many unusual habits, like communal upbringing of children or eating ants, one always stood out for me. Munduruku's language has number words only up to five. If you would ask a Munduruku how many people are in their community, they would most probably disregard the question as pure nonsense. This reaction made linguists think and ask the question, what perception is natural to us, humans? Are numbers only a social construct made for technological advancements? The answer is, Basically, yeah. Although the Munduruku have number words up to 5, their meaning is much less precise than what we are used to. When Munduruku were shown 5 objects, they used the numeral for 5 only 20% of the time to describe this quantity. Also, Pyukpovbi doesn't follow an interesting rule. Every other Munduruku numeral has the same number of syllables as the number it's supposed to mean. That's why there's a question mark next to this numeral among scientists, but that's a different topic, so let's just drop it here. But even much more stable numbers from 1 to 4 are perceived a bit different, not in a quantity meaning, but rather in terms of ratios. Let's have a number line. We learned as children to put the next numbers on the line, retaining the same length from one to another, and the difference of two numbers next to each other always has to be one. In other words, we were taught arithmetic scale. But Munduruku's intuition regarding numbers is not to order them on an arithmetic scale, but on a logarithmic scale, or rather some approximation of it. When they were shown a specific number of dots, from 1 to 10, they were asked to place this quantity on a number line. Instead of having the same distance between each number, the distance was the biggest from 1 to 2, and then it rapidly diminished between 2 and 3, 3 and 4, and so on. It's worth noting that despite not having the words for numbers over 5, Munduruku usually recognized correctly what quantity is larger. But maybe the most surprising thing is the fact that when a similar test was conducted on American children, the results were very similar in a preschool children group. Those in the second class, however, followed the arithmetic scale they were already taught in schools. The results strongly suggest that we are born with logarithmic perception of numbers. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. When you are given two trees with hundreds of apples on each of them, you don't need to count every single apple. You just need to choose the tree where it looks there's a bigger amount. You just follow your intuition. What you need to be good at is not precise counting, but rather estimating numbers by choosing bigger order of magnitude. That's the type of dilemma our ancestors needed to constantly solve way back before even the simplest number symbols were invented. And contemporary studies show that being good at estimating correlates with abilities to solve complex mathematical problems. So, in a way, in order to be precise, it's great if you're great with being imprecise. The research for this video relied heavily on the book called Alex Adventures in Numberland by Alex Bellos, 
It was a great read years ago when I bought it, and when I revisited it now, I enjoyed it even more. Regardless of your maths lover or your interest in maths, give this book a go. If you enjoyed this video and you want to help me develop this channel, then leave a like and a comment. Thanks in advance. And if you're driven by curiosity like me, my previous video was about an idea that made the student a millionaire in a few months. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.